Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today I have one of my all-time favorite guests, Linda Howell, and she is here talking about and super pumped up about talking about her book, Inspired Manifesting. Elevate your energy and ignite your dreams through the Akashic record so welcome linda it's great to see you again oh it's wonderful to be with you it's always so great when we have a chance to be together and connect and share thank you i i love the idea of um it seems like i've been you know i'm i get all these different requests and and, and igniting your dreams is something that seems to be coming more and more into like our consciousness like remembering our dreams and I'm wondering, you know, for this general book, how did you discover this information and where did the dreams part? Because it seems like it's something that's happening. Do you know, the there is, guys. I, okay. So, you know, every time I write a book, it's really a reporting of my own journey. <laughs> well, that's all I have, right? You, you share what you have, right? Anyway, um, so, so, so you're actually asking me two questions and I can answer both. So the first is that in my own journey, you know, of course, like everyone else, I'm, I'm really interested in manifesting, right? I want to make everything happen, you know, make everything happen. I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, um, I'm an enthusiastic person. I've, you know, I came in with a very big to-do list and, and I'm trying to get about the business of producing results and really, you know, fulfilling my destiny, whatever the heck it may be, okay? So what happens is along the way, I stumble across so many different understandings and ideas about, about prosperity, about manifesting, about who I am and my relationship to the world and my participation and contribution that, and, and along the way, because I, <laughs> you know, I, I like to, let's say I'm curious, right? I try all kinds of things, right? Whether they're human, whether they're inspired from other galaxies, I don't care, I'll try anything. Anyway, the long and short of it is, I woke up after I finished my last book about the soul's path and I looked around because I, it was clear to me, it's time, it's time really to bring, you know, whatever these treasures are inside of me, it's really time to deliver. Mm -hmm. Okay. I look around and I realize that everything I'm reading is helpful, but it doesn't all make good sense. It's helpful. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? I do. And one of the things I appreciate about is how appreciate about you in particular is how practical you are. Well, this is, you know, <laughs> this is a, this is serious business. This, you know, right. I, I take my, you know, my whole uh, principle, right? My bottom line for the spiritual path for the, the pursuit is that if it isn't helpful, if it does not improve the quality of my life, I don't have time. I'm not interested. Do you know? Anyway, but that's another story. So, so what ends up happening? You will love this. I'm, I'm, you know, I go on Amazon, manifest, manifest, manifest. And what hits me is that what I need to actually help me mine the inner treasures and deliver, it, that book doesn't exist. And the person who has to write the book that I need is me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, 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 that. Anyway, so the quest is on. Now, you know, I've been working in the Akashic Records since 1994, teaching since 96. You know, I had already written three books. I have a doctorate. I'm the first person in the world to have a doctorate in spiritual studies in the Akashic Records. Um, I got that in 2015. So this is like my home base. Mm -hmm. So of course I take my quest to the records. And I, and I found myself some years later, okay, that was like 2015 and it is now 2021. And so in that window of time, all these ideas and understandings 
became became clear to me. Mm -hmm. And I've had a chance to road test them and prove them out and bring them to students and see what works and what doesn't work. And, and so that's really what this is. And so the first part of the journey, of course, is all about, this is so painful, but it's true, the, the undoing of the superstitions and the old ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, when I realized my level of confusion about what spirituality was, spiritual, soul's purpose, all of those terms that we toss around, like, of course, everyone knows what we mean, I realized I didn't know what I was talking about. I, and, and then my relationship with the world, I was really, you know, I was raised, I was raised to be a very good victim, an obedient victim. I was, and I, I was steeped in a religion that really glorified that for women. And I took it to heart. I was like, hot dog, I will be so unhappy and God will love me so much. <laughs> the problem was it was a disaster. Anyway, so the next part of the journey in the 1980s, you may remember, this was when we all woke up and said, damn it all, you know, I'm gonna force my will down the throat of life, mm -hmm. right? If I'm any kind of person, I will insist on my, you know, my just desserts. Well, <laughs> that didn't work either. <laughs> you know, it really was a dis another, another disaster of a different variety, right? So I've tried both ways, right? And what was revealed to me then is what I've come to understand is the path of inspired manifesting, yeah. which is really about telling the truth about what I want and teasing that out from what society says I should want, what my mother wanted me to want, what my spouse wants me to want, what do I want? Okay, and then taking a look at the world in which I actually live. I notice it's a certain kind of world. It's not the world I grew up in. You know, I grew up in the 50s and 60s. It is, I don't know how we got into the 21st century, but somehow it happened and I came right along with it. And the world today is, I, I must be alert and pay attention to what's actually happening. Not what I think should be happening. Not, not you know, my, my cosmic fantasy, which is pretty glamorous, I must say. But it's just, <laughs> and it's non-existent, right? I'm like, okay, great. So all of this to say that this book is really, it's my story, it's my discoveries about not only how to mine my own inner truth, right? To be able to identify what is a, what are my soul's purposes and really what's the point? Do you know all those kinds of things? How do I make my dreams come true? And it's interesting you mentioned this about the dreams because I think the, the nugget, right? If there's a nugget in this book, it's that, you know, every one of us comes in with some kind of a dream. You know, the thing about our soul's purposes is we can't even, we can't deny them forever. We can't pretend they don't exist. We can't beat them into submission. They, they are persistent little rascals and they stay with us and they evolve and they change to adapt to the world in which we find ourselves. Anyway, in my work, I have come to understand that the dreams every person brings are exactly what the world needs now. And the idea, you know, the world, I mean, you know this, it, it's a mess out there. It's a nut house, right? My goodness, everything's going off here. Um, the, many people will say to me, I have all these dreams, but I know they don't make that much sense. And it's not really, how is it going to be helpful? You know, because everyone, everyone I talk to anyway, really has a deep, almost like a burning desire to be helpful, to mm -hmm. make a positive difference. Mm -hmm. But see, it is through us as the people we are. It's not outside of us. And so the dreams that you have been carrying, 
the dreams I have been carrying, sometimes hiding from myself and others, sometimes sharing, depending on any number of factors. That's exactly what the world needs. It's, it's like a karmic imperative. It's like, why do you think you're here? Why do you think you can't stop thinking about caring for children, old people, animals, building a flower garden, harvesting your own you know, organic crops, whatever the heck it is. Everyone has different dreams. This is the other thing. Which of course, you know, Shaq, you know, see, I think everybody wants to be an Akashic record teacher. Eh, that's not really true. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? I, and then I find out everyone has different dreams. Mm. And every dream, no matter how we judge it, you know, human judgment is vicious. No matter how we judge it, I say, oh, it's not important. It's so easy. No, no, no. It's easy for me. Who cares? We minimize or we, you know, or we inflate, mm -hmm. right? Either we'll go with either one. <laughs> either one's mm -hmm. fine. The problem is, that's not the way I want to say it. The challenge is to be honest with ourselves, others, and to begin where we are with what we have to share who we are in a way that nurtures and sustains us, not in a way that wears us out. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, the age of martyrdom is over. We had a good run for a couple thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> the first 2000 years were great, it's that last, but do you understand? I mean, we have all been raised on this idea that if we give to others, then magic will happen. And mm -hmm. we'll we'll get to be happy. Some you know cosmic board of karma is going to deem us worthy of happiness or something. It doesn't. This that we cannot suffer our way into happiness. That is an energetic impossibility. Mm -hmm. What is possible is to discover within ourselves what we want to give in a way that gives us life that is nurturing, right, is sustaining to us. And as we do that, the equation comes into balance. Mm. So the, this business of people, people are saying, my God, I've had this dream for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. I didn't even realize it was still with me, like haunting me like a mm. shadow. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, because now is the time. Now is the time. This is the time. This is it, folks, <laughs> right? We came to the world at this time to be a part of this. I mean, we know there's no accidents, right? You, mm -hmm. me, at all of us, right? At some level, our soul said, I do not want to miss that. Mm. Right? <laughs> and here we are. And we're not here, if this is a dynamic life, right? We are not here to sit on the bench, mm. okay? We are here to participate. And then there are all kinds of human conditions that, you know, get in our way. Issues like perfectionism, <laughs> you know? I know when I first came on the path, I'll tell you what I thought. I thought, first of all, I thought I was gonna get a great haircut, which I did do. I was gonna get a great haircut, cool outfit, clean the clean the house right make a pot of tea and stare i don't know for the next 50 years or something i it never occurred to me i'd have to keep living i thought i was just going to levitate well lo and behold that is not the case <laughs> you know the fact of the matter is that we awaken so that we can participate okay the 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 point of the spiritual awakening, of the spiritual seeking, striving, the purpose is that we discover our own unique usefulness and participate, even when we are still imperfect. Mm. You know, we know in the Akashic record, one of the things I love about the record is the way it accommodates um, everything, because, you know, it's made of everything, but it's, um, it accommodates paradox. Mm -hmm. And whether we're aware of it or not, we are all involved in that primary paradox. 
um, which is on one hand, we are infinite, eternal, immortal, unlimited. At the level of the soul, that is absolutely true. The level of the human being, that is not so true. We are finite. We have expiration dates. No matter what, that's, and listen, you know, and I notice, I look in the mirror, you know, I used to be blonde. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm like, who is that lady that looks like my grandmother? I thought it was a sad day. This is so funny. I thought it was, I remember the day I thought, oh my God, I look like my mother. What I wouldn't give to look like my mother. I look like my grandmother. <laughs> I'm like, huh? And then I'm offended. I am offended. The arrogance. Oh my God. I thought that the purpose of the spiritual journey was to do an end run on the human experience. This is not the case. So we can dive into the heart of it and to learn to take our place and do our part and bring our dreams to life, even though as human beings, we are mere mortals. If you think of the greats, you know, whether it's Einstein or, you know, Schweitzer, I mean, any one of these guys, you know, these guys were weirdos. They looked funny. I'm sure they didn't have a big, you know, they didn't hang out with everybody at the lunch table. These guys were like, you know, they weren't good dressers. I mean, there are a lot of things we could say against them, right? None of them said, listen, I'm really too imperfect to do my math equations. Mm. And no one ever, right? They, they didn't say that. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, excuse me. If you think of the people who have discovered great things that have changed the course of our lives, none of them. I mean, what if Louis Pasteur said, oh, listen, I'm going to wait until I'm perfect before I start tinkering around with that. No. Mm. I love it. Okay, I want to break down everything you okay. said into little packets. So okay. um, we've been talking to Linda Howe about her book, Inspired Manifesting, Elevate Your Energy and Ignite Your Dreams with the Akashic Records. Thank you so much. And in the next section, what I wanted to do is, gosh, there are so many different directions to go. Let's go to mm -hmm. talking about the soul and getting a sense of having a dialogue with your soul, which you, you started talking about in the segment, but I want to dive deeper in it. Thank you so much.